And good evening, Southeast Texas. Because of the possible threat of severe weather tomorrow on an enhanced risk, we're doing a uh, special presentation on Facebook Live. Uh, first off, going to do a quick weather cast, show you what we think is going to happen, and then we'll be taking your questions and comments here shortly. So nothing has changed as far as uh, the slight to enhanced risk. Uh, we see this uh, from time to time, so this is not unusual. But uh, again, anytime we start getting into the enhanced mode, uh, that certainly perks up my ears. Right now, we're looking at a slight to enhance risk over portions of the area. That's a 15 to 30 percent probability that we will see severe weather coming up tomorrow. So if you think about it, a 70 to 80 percent probability that we won't. But still, this is a significant threat as far as severe weather. Now again, this is not guaranteed that we're going to see severe weather. We're hoping that it's just thunderstorms and this all moves on quickly through and that's it. But because of the threat of uh, tornadoes, which is a 5 to 10 percent chance, uh, we are watching this very closely. That is uh, through uh, tomorrow, probably to uh, the evening hours. And then for the wind damage, nothing has changed here. Still at a 15% probability. And for the uh, hail risk, damaging hail of uh, an inch or greater, uh, about a 15% probability. So again, the timetable has not changed. We're still waiting a line of thunderstorms to develop. I don't think that's really going to materialize until tomorrow morning. Tonight, though, we're watching a front kind of slowly drifting our way from the northwest and uh, that will present uh, scattered showers and a, maybe a few thunderstorms I'd say after two three o'clock in the morning closer to daybreak. Now as we go through uh, tomorrow morning rain chances will significantly increase as the trough and uh, upper low begin to move on in. So uh, Thursday morning uh, after daybreak we're expecting a 60 maybe 70 percent coverage of numerous showers and scattered storms. Some of those could be severe. It's going to be a windy day tomorrow. We'll see wind gusts just because of this storm system of 30, 35 miles an hour. In fact, a wind advisory will be in effect for tomorrow. Then if we get any severe weather, that could amp up the winds for tomorrow. They'll be mainly out of the southeast here in the triangle and then shift to the west and southwest as the front goes by. And we think that's going to be uh, maybe around uh, 2 to 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Now, because that line has not formed, there's still going to be some wiggle room either earlier I think later will probably not be on the car on the table. If anything, uh, it may come in uh, noontime, one, two, three, maybe as late as 5 p.m. tomorrow. Sorry for the uh, kind of broad uh, timetable or window of opportunity, but it's just because of the uncertainty on this line of storms expected to come on through just has not materialized. So once that does happen, as far as that uh, line developing, then uh, the modeling will do a lot much a lot better and uh, we'll be able to pretty much uh, nail it as far as the timetable. Again, the rain is expected to be moving out to by 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. So if you have any outdoor, well, I'd say outdoor, if you have any plans tomorrow night, I don't think it's going to be a bad evening. I think uh, certainly by 8, 9, uh, we ought to start seeing uh, drier weather move on into the area, if not sooner. Again, that's slight to enhance risk encompassing southeast Texas. So again, you need to know the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch means that uh, conditions are favorable. I think tomorrow will probably play, be placed under a tornado watch. Uh, hopefully we don't get any warnings. Warnings mean that uh, we have something that needs to be addressed, like something on Doppler radar or something actually sighted. Hopefully we don't see that tomorrow. Okay, what does it take to have severe weather? Obviously a tornado. You have to have wind gusts of 58 miles an hour or greater for it to be severe as far as a thunderstorm and or hail of one inch or greater. Now you could have marble sized hail and it's not going to be severe. You can have wind gusts of 50 miles an hour and technically that's not severe. The uh, definition is 58 miles an hour and greater and one inch size hail or greater. And that's in the, uh, in the possibility. So, okay, this is just updated. This is the power outage index. Did a pretty good job during uh, Delta and Laura as far as the uh, power outages across uh, southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana. And there's as much as a moderate chance of uh, some power outages coming up tomorrow. Could be scattered as that line moves on through. So again, I'm not real concerned about flash flooding at this point unless something unforeseen materializes, but I think this is gonna be a quick mover and uh, we do see an end for this uh, coming up tomorrow evening. So this won't be prolonged. So you can see some uh, one to two, maybe three inch totals over the area. Now we may have some isolated totals of four to five inches, but I still think we can certainly handle that. So here we are. 
We're sitting warm and humid right now. Temperatures around 70 in southeast Texas. There's the line of showers and thunderstorms. That's the front. Notice the front is semi stalled right now, and that's where the heaviest rainfall where there are flash flood watches in effect. So far, we have not seen any warnings and there are no watches in effect for southeast Texas. That may change as we head towards daybreak and uh, this begins to move closer to our general area. The front again is just off towards our northwest. We'll say uh, maybe this side of uh, say Longview nearing Conroe and maybe Houston and down into South Texas. Look at the snow ongoing. I was looking at some of the webcams over towards Fort Stockton and uh, back over towards Odessa. All snow out that way. And uh, again, that's going to stay out that way. No snow this round. Sorry. We'll try to do better. And may see a few flurries for Dallas, but again, it's going to stay northwest of them. We're worried, not worried, but concerned that we're going to see once this upper low uh, begins to pivot and head into Texas, that we will see a line of thunderstorms that could be possibly severe. So flash flood watch in effect from Houston West and uh, back over towards Tyler. And notice no advisories or warnings for Dallas, but uh, mineral wells back over towards Childress and especially the uh, Permian Basin back over towards the Stockton Plateau and the Trans-Pecos area of the big bend of West Texas, all under a uh, winter storm warning. They could see anywhere from 8, 12, maybe as much as uh, around 15 to 17 inches just to the west of San Angelo and southeast of Odessa. As you can see, very heavy snow coming down at about an inch per hour right now over into uh, southwest and west Texas at this time, but it is expected to amp up as we head towards uh, daybreak. It's all because of the movement of this upper low, not just the trough and low pressure. Look at the spin on that. This is going to be headed on into Texas as we head towards tomorrow morning, and that will enhance the lift across uh, our area. Notice the winds are going this way. And then the winds here are going this way. This is what we call a split flow. OK, this area is where the winds aloft are spreading out. So the air has to come up that causes lift. We look for areas of lift. We also look for signatures as far as uh, the weather, uh, the upper levels. And this is one of those signatures that we're looking at. We're going to be watching the low head on into Texas. This is just updated. And we'll be watching the potential for what we call a negative tilt. This is the trough and it's taken on a negative tilt. Normally troughs have the are, are off to the southwest rather than the southeast. So a lot of energy is going to be cranking into southeast Texas and that induces lift. When you have lift that causes clouds, rain, thunderstorms, you get the idea. So that's one of the signatures that we are trained to look for. Another signature that we're looking at is in the upper level. This is a jet stream level right around 34,000 feet and this is tomorrow afternoon and evening. This is what we call the left front quadrant of uh, the jet stream and this very strong piece of winds anywhere from around uh, oh, 120 to at times 140 miles per hour at 34,000 feet will also increase lift across our area. So those lift areas are going to be over our area uh, coming up tomorrow and that should spell a great chance of rain for our area. So tonight that front that is up towards uh, Longview will kind of ooze on down into the lakes area and stall somewhere between maybe Sills being back up to Jasper. They'll be chilly up towards Jasper tomorrow morning and then that front will lift back to the north. Sometime late morning, probably the early afternoon hours, uh, we'll be watching a line on radar and uh, looks like about two, three, four, five o'clock we ought to have a squall line moving through southeast Texas. This is going to be moving very quickly. And that's a signature that it could throw down some damaging winds uh, with this line. So that's what we're going to be watching. And if this model is correct, we may see a reduction in temperatures uh, by late tomorrow afternoon. So don't be surprised. May not want, may want to take a jacket with you if you're going to be outside uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're going to bypass that. Uh, as far as the uh, marine forecast. But again, tonight, I think we're okay as far as severe threat, mostly. Um, if we do have some issues, it would be closer to daybreak as far as the timing. Wind's going to be gusting 20, 25 miles an hour. Again, certainly cooler uh, north of that front up in the lakes area and warmer down here in the Triangle. Then tomorrow, everybody's going to get rain, I believe. 
And again, that one, two to three inches, certainly a, a good chance. And again, just this storm, because of the difference in pressure, pressure contrast, we, will, we call it uh, pressure gradient, uh, it's going to cause winds 30, 35 miles an hour coming up tomorrow. This is uh, in addition to what we could see as far as damaging winds if that does materialize. Again, it's not guaranteed, but the potential is there, and that's what we are uh, alerting to you to the possibility. Otherwise, a red bar day coming up on Thursday as uh, that line comes through. But again, by tomorrow night, 7, 8 o'clock, most of the activity should be out of the area. And they'll start uh, 2021 on a quiet, chilly night, or a note, I should say. And hopefully that'll last through the upcoming hurricane season. All right, let's take some uh, questions and we'll try to answer them for everybody. Uh, don't have too many questions okay. yet, um, but can you go, I guess people are asking specific areas, so can you go back to the, like the severe threats? Okay, let me get to that graphic. My button doesn't want to move back. Let's see, there we go. Uh, let's see, I, I'm uh, going to assume that it's going to be as far as the, um, this right here, as far as the risk. So generally, Eastern and southeastern sections of our viewing area, including Beaumont, uh, most of Jefferson County, Orange, parts of uh, Jasper, Newton County, will have the highest risk. This is all going to blow up as it heads over into southwest Louisiana and uh, heads on into an area of even um, higher instability over towards southern Louisiana, uh, maybe over towards uh, Lafayette and further down I-10 over towards New Orleans. They're going to have a better chance of severe weather off that way. But again, uh, Jasper, uh, maybe over towards, uh, say, Hardin County, there's a 15% chance or a lower chance. But you can have severe weather even in marginal risks, okay? That's just the way it is. It's not a guarantee. That's what we're hoping for. But right now, it just seems that the odds will be a little higher into southeastern sections of our viewing area. Any other questions? Um, people asking about this, the timeline of it again. Okay, let's see, let me get through all the uh, graphics there. Again, um, tonight, I think the rains will gradually pick up, I'd say probably after two, three o'clock in the morning and um, towards daybreak, that's when we'll see this 50% coverage. Scattered showers, a few thunderstorms, it'll be breezy. I think the severe risk will start amping up as we head through Thursday morning. So we'll see numerous showers and scattered thunderstorms. Again, some of those could be severe. We'll go with the 60% coverage, but that'll quickly march upwards to 100% coverage and the potential of severe weather as that line uh, actually comes through. And again, this is very tentative. It's dicey. It could change maybe earlier. It could come in maybe noon. That's certainly possible. But right now I'm going with what most of the models say, anywhere between 2 to 5 uh, p.m. tomorrow afternoon. And I think that most of the rain should be out of here by the time we woke up 2021. We're running in the new year. Uh, people are asking about hail chances. Okay, that was at uh, 15 percent. This is, um, again, damaging hail. Now, again, you can have pea size, you can have marble size, but once it gets to one inch, that's when it starts doing damage, and that's when it becomes severe. And uh, all of Southeast Texas pretty much in that 15% probability uh, as far as damaging hail, and that's when it becomes severe. So we may have some, uh, some warnings tomorrow. It could be severe thunderstorms with damaging hail and damaging wind. I think damaging wind is gonna be the main mode, personally, in my opinion. Um, I think we could see some wind gusts 60 miles an hour. Again, it's not guaranteed, but that's what I think is gonna probably happen. Um, and some more, just tornadoes. Okay, the tornado threat is relatively low, but non-zero. It's anywhere between a 5 and 10% probability across southeast Texas. Uh, that's uh, with probably the line. And if we're going to see tornadoes tomorrow, they would appear to form ahead of the line. So uh, could be a little earlier tomorrow, late morning, early afternoon. We'll watch that very closely. I may have to being a little early coming up tomorrow uh, to see what's going on and uh, keep you abreast of what's uh, actually occurring across the area. So we're watching uh, Doppler radar very, quick, very closely. 
A few people asking about snow. No snow. No snow. Sorry, no snow. You want snow? You're in the wrong area to have snow. Uh, I think the other side of Dallas, let's see, let me get to that graphic. The other side of Dallas, man, out in West Texas, this is going to be a paralyzing snowstorm, believe it or not. Um, let's see, let me get to that graphic. You can see the snow. It's uh, over towards the Pecos, uh, Trans-Pecos, uh, Fort Stockton, Ozona, back over towards, uh, let's see, get my geography, Midland and Odessa. It's already snowing out that way. And again, that's where the winter storm warnings are, over towards the Trans-Pecos, the Fort Stockton Plateau, the Permian Basin, and really the west uh, hill country could see some snow west of San Antonio. And uh, not far from Austin, then our winter storm watch. But uh, it looks like west of I-35 is going to see snow. A pretty good bet there. But uh, no issues for Dallas, Waco, back over in towards uh, Austin or San Antonio at this time. It just we're just we're on the warm part of the of, of this storm. This is all going to head on out as we head towards uh, Friday uh, in through North Texas. Anything else? Uh, just people asking about different areas: Galveston, Coleman Hill. <sighs> well, Evadale. let's just say that um, again, the area is going to be of seen a 15 to 30 percent probability of severe weather. I think we'll see one to three inches of rainfall, and um, again. Um, Maybe the closer you live to Louisiana, the better chance you'll have as far as severe weather. Over to southwest Louisiana, over to Lake Charles, Moss Bluff, back over to De Quincey, uh, Vinton, Iowa, and uh, Jennings all under a, an enhanced risk, a 30% probability of severe weather. So um, the timing will dictate when we see as far as when the severe thunderstorm, as far as as the line starts to really crank, that'll really dictate what we see as far as, you know, if the line fails to materialize and starts to uh, develop maybe along the Sabine River, that would certainly lower our chances. I don't think that's going to be the case. But uh, again, it's going to be coming through the most warm part of the day. So that kind of cranks up uh, the aspects of seeing uh, severe weather. Well, that's about it. Okay. Well, um, Again, if you don't have our app, I would suggest you to have it. Uh, we will certainly be keeping you abreast and sending out frequent updates and watches and warnings. All that information is going to be on our app. If not, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and also on our, uh, on our uh, website at 12newsnow.com. Stay safe and have a great night.